Okay, so you're watching this video because your teacher has asked you to prove the squeeze theorem or prove the sandwich theorem and you're, or you're just curious on yourself and you don't know how. So this is a pretty easy proof, pretty much. The sandwich theorem says that, you know, if you have like uh, a sequence AN that kind of looks like this maybe, and you have a sequence BN that maybe looks more like this, and then you have a sequence CN that could look something like this. These all will have the same limits. Okay, so here's what the question formally will look like. It will say something like prove that if the sequence AN, BN, and CN are sequences such that um, for AN, um, AN converges to the limit L, and for CN, CN converges to the limit L, and a n is a center equal to b n is a center equal to c n for all n. Then prove that b n also converges to the limit l. Okay, so now what do we know? We know three things. First, we know that a n converges to l. We also know that uh, c n converges to l, and we also know that a n is a center equal to b n is a center equal to c n for all n. Now you might be wondering, well, look, this is one of the easiest questions. You're just going to take limit of a n is less than or equal to limit of b n is less than or equal to limit of c n. And then you're like, okay, well, the limit of a n is just L is less than or equal to this limit of b n is less than or equal to L. And you're like, okay, well, this is easy. This is this has to be L. I mean, like. If something is e is greater than or equal to and less than or equal to the same thing, then it is that thing. Well, it might seem like it's might seem like you can do this, but you can't because like you know these you can't like multiply by limits here. You know what I'm saying? This inequality you just can't do it. And this proof requires the epsilon delta language, and you're gonna have to get used to it. But it's it's a pretty easy proof. So we need to remember what it means to converge. Like, what is the definition of convergence? So, using the epsilon delta language from one, we know that the sequence a n converges to l. So, this means that for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists an n capital n, like in a, such that for all little n bigger than this n capital a we have this inequality that holds sequence a n minus l plus n epsilon. And from two, we know that for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists the n for c such that for all n greater than n of c, c n minus l is less than epsilon. This is just the definition of what it means to converge to a limit. I'm just writing definitions. That's all I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to go to um, a new uh, slide, I guess. Uh, okay. So, here's what we know. We know that, okay, so this is just a little off topic, but if I say um, the absolute value of x is less than 1, this means that negative 1 is less than x is less than 1. This, these two are the same thing. They mean the same thing. The absolute value of x is less than 1 means the same as negative 1 is less than x is less than 1. And if you think about it for a second, you'll realize that, oh, yeah, these are the same thing. Because, I mean, if x is like negative 1 half, then the absolute value of x is going to be 1 half, which is less than 1. And it's still contained in this interval. All right, but anyway, so using what we know by that, we can say that the absolute value of a n minus l is less than epsilon. This is the same as writing negative epsilon is less than or equal is less than a n minus l, which is less than epsilon. Okay, good. Similarly, c n minus l is less than epsilon. And we know these two things. We know these two things. B 
because this is it, it's just it's given to us because they told us that a n and c n converge to the limit l. So this means that negative epsilon is less than c n minus l is less than epsilon. It's the same thing. These mean these things mean the same thing. Okay. So we have to rem okay. So in both inequalities, let's just add l to both sides. So for the first one, we have negative epsilon plus l is less than a n is less than epsilon plus l. And remember, this is for all n greater than n a. And for the second inequality, we have negative epsilon plus l is less than c n, which is less than epsilon plus l for all n greater than n c. Okay, so we need to remember that a n is less than b n or equal to b n, which is less than or equal to c n for all n. Okay, now remember, this is important. You need to remember these last three lines are the, the big important ones. I'm going to go to a new slide now. So, um, you're going to want to make so we have negative epsilon plus L is less than a n, but we said before that a n is less than or equal to b n. So this is less than or equal to b n, and we said b n is less than or equal to c n at the bottom. So it's less than or equal to c n, which is less than epsilon plus L from that second inequality. And when is this true? This is only true for all n, for all n greater than n a, and for all n greater than n c. So it has to satisfy all three of these things. And what's the easiest way to satisfy all three of these things? Just set a number n, let a new number equal the bigger of n a and n c and we just usually call this max parentheses n a comma n c okay then we know that for all n greater than n so this n this capital n right here it could be n c it could be n a it doesn't matter what it is. It's just whatever is the biggest one out of n a or n c. So for all n greater than n, we have this inequality that holds negative epsilon plus l is less than a n is less than or equal to b n is less than or equal to c n is less than epsilon plus l. Right. Okay. I'm going to go to a new slide now. Okay. Now because um, because we have this inequality right here, because of this, we can say negative epsilon plus L is less than, we're going to take out this a n part and we're just going to write less than b n, because if negative epsilon plus L is less than a n, which is less than or equal to b n, then it certainly is less than b n. Think of, the, think of Bn as 2 and An as 1. If negative ep, epsilon plus L is less than 1, it's certainly going to be less than 2. So we can say negative epsilon plus L is less than Bn. And similarly, if you think of Cn as the, like the number 3, then if you know that 3 is less than epsilon plus L, then certainly 2, which would, which like you assume Bn is 2 or something, then 2 is certainly less than epsilon plus L. So you can say something like this. 
and then you can subtract L from both sides. Just like this. And remember what this means? This is the same thing as just saying like this. Remember, attached to all these is for all n greater than n. For all n greater than n. So what did we want to prove in the beginning? We wanted to prove that for all epsilon greater than 0, we wanted to prove that Bn converges to L. And so by definition, using the epsilon delta definition, for all epsilon greater than 0, there exists an n such that for all n greater than n, this inequality holds. And we just prove that this inequality holds. And to finish off a proof, you'll sometimes write this little square like that. Okay, I hope I helped you.